welcome to this webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be on derivatives. Right? Um, derivatives have become extremely popular in today's day and time right? with this massive increase in volume even on the Indian markets. Now, what is a derivative? The essential question that we need to ask is what is a derivative? Derivatives are investments that derive their value from some underlying quantity. Now, it's usually a security, it could be a stock, it could be a bond, it could be a commodity, it could be even interest rate features that you have. Right? Now, primarily there are three types of derivative instruments that we normally use. One is a forward contract, the second is a futures contract, and the third is a uh, option. Right? There is a fourth contract which is swaps, uh, which is normally used by institutional players and mostly relate to uh, in terms of cash flows with regard to interest rates or repayment of principal, primarily because of you know, floating and fixed rate of interest. So that enabled the two players to exchange their uh, cash flows. But what is popularly used is basically forwards, futures and options. Now forwards is mostly a customized contract right? and it is an arrangement between two private parties. It is not actively traded in the market. So for example A and B, for example A would like to purchase a particular commodity at a given price and would like, would obviously need some amount of foreign currency at a latter point of time. Now, instead of exposing himself to exchange rate risk, maybe three months or four months down the line, what he chooses to do, he may enter into a forward contract with the person that, okay, I would like a certain amount of foreign currency at this particular price. Now, what happens in a forward contract? Because it is a customized contract, right? it is something between two parties. So, there is always counterparty risk and uh, it is uh, it has to be exercised right? there is no uh, be, there is no option of not exercising it but there is a certain amount of counterparty risk and so therefore they are illiquid right? and it cannot be traded on any exchange now a futures contract is very much like a forward contract except that it is traded on a exchange now there is a clearing house which takes the responsibility of the counterparty risk that in case the buyer of the futures refuses to honor his or her commitment, the futures, uh, the exchange decides to honor the risk and then tries to you know, take it from the buyer that you know, uh, recovers the money from the buyer, right? Now how does the future basically work, right? Uh, a future works in terms of, uh, you know, uh, there is a particular uh, contract, right? And there is the contract size price, quantity, the quality. Uh, in terms of a commodity, there will be a delivery location and a delivery date. Okay. Now there are, uh, in terms of, right, there will be a buyer and a seller on an option. Okay. Now for example, let's say, uh, let's say, we assume that we take a futures option on, let's say, a stock index. Now stock index is that at a particular size of a contract, let's say in the example Nifty, the size of the contract is 200. So depending on whatever the price of the Nifty is, let's assume it is 4000, right. So 4000 into 200, that is the size of the contract, there is a certain amount of margin that is paid. Okay. Uh, let's say assume that the margin is 10%. So 4000 into 200 into 0.10, that is the amount of margin that has to be paid. Right? For example, let's assume that the stock index is at a price of 4000, 200 contracts, right? so 8 and 10% margin of this. He has to give only 80,000 rupees as margin. Okay. Now, as and when at that particular end of the at a particular features. Now, there are three types of features: one month, two months, and three months. Right. Now, depending on whatever features he takes, now he can a particular future. They can the person can be either long in the future or can be short in the future. When I say long in the future, that at a particular strike price, he buys a future contract. When I say short at a particular futures price in the future, he goes short on the future. Right? Now, for example, in this case, right, the, the strike price is 4000 rupees. Right? So that means if the buyer is long in the future, he, has, he is under obligation that he has to buy the futures at rupees 4000. Okay? Now, then at let's say he's bought the futures for three months, okay, he's, uh, the time is for three months. Okay. Now at the end of three months, right, there will be yet another forward contract, okay, uh, another futures contract 
and then we will figure out whether he is going to make a gain or a loss. Okay. Now let's assume that at the end of that three month period, the spot price at that moment of time is four thousand two hundred and fifty. Right? If the price is four thousand two hundred and fifty, in that case, the buyer of the option, right, he will buy it at four thousand and immediately enter into an offsetting transaction, and he can sell it for four thousand two hundred and fifty. Because as I said, in most cases in the futures contract, and they can be settled in two ways. Either they are cash settled. Or you make a offsetting trade, or you give delivery of the goods or whatever security that is in question. Okay. Now, in commodities, you have options of both in terms of cash settled, right, or offsetting, or in terms of even of delivery of goods. But financial futures mostly are either settled by cash or by entering into offsetting positions. In nine out of ten times, they will be usually settled by having an offsetting position rather than having cash settled. Right. So in this case, what will happen is that the buyer of the option he can he has a four thousand, right? He can immediately sell it for four thousand two hundred fifty. So he actually makes a gain of two fifty into two hundred. That is, if you look at this, he is actually made a profit of fifty thousand or eighty thousand, right? Because the margin that he is actually put up is only eighty thousand. So because of the change in price from four thousand. One thousand two hundred fifty into whatever two hundred contracts that he has uh, size of the contract, and he's actually made up a profit of fifty thousand divided by eighty thousand. Now, in this case, of course, when we have said go long or short on the futures, right? A person who had gone short on the futures would have suffered a loss because he will sell it at four thousand, right? He has been obligated to sell it at four thousand, and he would have had to buy it at four thousand two hundred fifty. So, in this case, the seller of the future. Person who is gone short of the future would have suffered a loss. Now, what is the advantage of a futures contract? Now, there are actually two types of players who are in the futures market. One, of course, is basically the speculators, and the third, second problem is the hedgers. Okay, there is a third class which you say that is the arbitrators, right? And we will not discuss that at this point in time because we are only exploiting the differences between the cash and the futures market. What we are mainly concerned is the two classes. One is the hedgers and the other is speculators. Okay. Now, if you are a speculator, right, which means that you don't have the delivery of the particular security in question, right, you are only buying futures or selling futures without having the particular underlying security at hand. So, in this case, as I said in this example, the guy who was bought at the futures contract at four thousand, right, and he is in a good position. The futures contract goes to four thousand two hundred fifty, so he makes a Profit. But what if the situation had been that he had bought it at four thousand, and let's say the price goes to thirty eight hundred. So in that case, he would have made a loss of two hundred into forty thousand. Right now, in that case, because he does not have the particular security in question, therefore, it is for him it is purely speculative. Right in this case, he doesn't hold the uh, particular underlying security. But in case of a hedging, right, one would hold a security in question, and that enables you to manage your losses. Now, the strategy for a hedger would have been that if you are long on the particular security, if you are long on the particular security, let's assume that you are long on the security, and in that case, on the futures contract, one will be short, right? If you are short on the security. One would be long on the future, right? Now, for example, let's say there is a particular person who you know buys, uh, who uh, cultivates wheat, okay? And at a point of time, let's say three months, right? The wheat needs to be sold, right? Now he expects that the price of wheat is let's say going to be uh, let's say ten rupees uh, a kilo, okay? Right. Or let's say, uh, let's do it by quintal, right? So let's be quintal hundred uh, into ten, so it's one thousand rupees. Now this is the price that he is expecting, right? So uh, you know one thousand rupees per quintal. Right? This is the price he is expecting, one thousand rupees by quintal. Now this is the price that he would want because he has covered all his raw material costs, cost of cultivation, whatever his personal expenses, etc., etc. So he is expecting a price of one thousand rupees per quintal. Obviously, he would want to be in a situation that he would get one thousand rupees 
Okay. Now he is right now he is long on the particular commodity in this case wheat, right? He is long on the particular commodity, so he has hundred kilos, right? Each for ten rupees, right? So the price is one thousand. What he will do is basically enter into a futures contract wherein he will be short on the futures. So what he will be doing when he says short, he will particularly sell the futures at a particular price, right? Now at a point of time, right? The futures price and the spot price should have some relation with it. So assuming that let's say he goes, let's say on the futures contract he goes short and he decided to sell it at let's say one thousand. Okay, he enters into the futures price and he sells it at one thousand. Okay. Now, in case, right? In case the price of the uh, futures goes up, right? For example, right? The price of the wheat goes up instead it becomes. Twelve rupees, right? In that case, right? He has hundred kilos, right? He is in the spot market. He is able to sell it at twelve hundred, right? In the futures market, since he is short on it, he makes a two hundred, right? Because he will have to buy it at twelve hundred, right? In this case, he makes a two hundred loss. So the two hundred gain in the spot market is offset by the two hundred gain in the futures market. In the opposite way, transaction. Assuming that the price had gone up to let's say eight, right? So in this case, in the spot market, he gets eight hundred bucks, right? And he suffers a loss of two hundred rupees. But this loss is made up by the gain in the futures market because he sells it at one thousand, right? And he is able to buy and more enter into an offsetting transaction at eight hundred. Either he can deliver his produce at eight hundred, right? So in that case, a two hundred loss that he makes in the spot market. He is able to offset by the futures. So in this case, a hedging transaction works in case of a futures market. Now suppose in this case, let's assume that now he is not long on the particular security; he is short on the particular security. Right? So if he is short on the security, he needs to buy. Let's say again, let's assume. Let's say it is a particular company which is into branded wheat, okay, and therefore he needs to. Particularly, buy some hundred quintals, right, or hundred kilos at let's say rupees ten again. That's one thousand. Okay, so he enters into a futures contract. Okay, uh, when he enters into a futures contract, right. So in this case, he is short on the security, so therefore he will be long on the futures. He will buy it. Okay, so he enters into that, which is that one thousand. Okay. Now, what happens if there is an increase in price, right? Now, if there is an increase in price, let's assume that the price goes to twelve rupees per kilo. In that case, this would become twelve hundred. So he will make a since, right? He is long on the futures, right? So he has bought it at one thousand, and he can sell it at twelve hundred. He has made a two hundred gain on the futures, right? But in this case, in the spot market, he has made a loss of. Two hundred, because instead of one thousand, he has had to spend twelve hundred to buy that hundred kilos of wheat, right? So in this case, he has made a loss of two hundred. So loss of two hundred in the spot market is made up by the gain in the futures market. If on the other hand, let's assume that the price had gone down to let's say eight rupees, right? So in this case, he buys it at one thousand. Right, sells it at eight hundred in the futures market. He makes a two hundred loss out here in the futures market, but right, he is able to buy wheat at eight hundred instead of the one thousand. So he makes a two hundred gain in the spot market, but a two hundred loss in the futures market. So effectively, in a hedging strategy, right, what happens is that by using a hedge, right, the gains or losses on the spot market is Effectively hedged in the futures market. Now the question is that whether or not can you completely hedge your position. Now it is very difficult to completely hedge your position because to create a perfect hedge, you need the size of the contract, which just completely meets the you know kind of or this exposure that you have. Now because they are customized contracts, right? It is very difficult to have a complete 
hedge in a futures market because as I said the size of the contract is limited right so you need to buy multiples for example in a nifty right you will have the size of the contract is 200 so everything will be only in multiples of 200 right so to that extent you may not be able to create a perfect hedge but an imperfect hedge here and so you can quite effectively uh, be able to hedge your position right okay now the second thing is how would you price a futures contract okay now going by simple time value example this suppose again let's let's take the other thing it says 100 kilos of wheat right one kilo of wheat and 10 rupees is the price right now this 1000 right in a futures contract i uh, suppose i enter into a buy contract which means i go long on the particular futures right now when i go long on the particular futures i am supposed to give that 1000 rupees a particular after a particular period that is let's say after two months or one month or three months right so I am supposed to give 1000 rupees only at a particular time which is in future right so obviously there is a time value that is attached to it right so in that case whatever is a fair price of the future depends on the rate of interest the risk free rate of interest so depending on the spot market 1 plus r to the power of t right the fair price of the future should be actually s into 1 plus r to the power of t where r is the risk free rate of return and t is the time value right so example if the risk free rate of return is let's say uh, 6 percent and let's say the spot market is let's say 1000 then in that case 1.05 and suppose we have purchased a 3 month futures contract so this would be 3 by 12 right so 1000 into 1.05 to the power of 0.25 that would be the fair price of a future now normally what we do is here in this case we have taken an explicit 1 plus r which is in a particular 3 month period suppose if I had to say that I was continuously compounding it in that case the formula would become S E R T right where E is the exponential right and R is the rate of interest, risk free rate of interest, and T is the time to expiration, right? The value of E is 2.7128, right? So let's assume this spot market is 1000 into 2.7128 to the power of R, whatever is 0 0.05, into time is 3 upon 12, right? So accordingly, I would be able to find out the price of the future, right? Now here in this case what we have discussed is a basic financial future where the only thing that we are considering is in terms of the rate of interest. Now suppose there was a commodity that we were looking at. In case of a commodity then there would have been some storage cost as well. Right? So in that case the formula would have changed to some amount. Right? In this case it would have been S plus U. Right? Where U is the carrying on the storage cost. Right? If it is continuously compounded into E R T right sometimes if you are expressing the storage cost as a percentage of the you know uh, spot price in that case it would have been S E R plus U to the power of uh, S E to the power uh, R plus U to the power of uh, into T so not to the power E R plus U into if you had considered a storage cost as a percentage of the spot price, right? As a so therefore, in terms of rate of interest, then, then you would have added it to the R. But most of the times, we add it to the particular spot price, whatever is the particular carrying cost in terms of that, and find the expense, right? You can take a particular example, right? For example. Let's say we had to buy, let's say, uh, 7 kilos or a let's say, let's say 100 kilos of bananas. And 
let's say one banana is let's say rupees 20 per kilo right so in this case this is a particular spot price and let's say the rate of interest is is uh, five percent per annum right and this is the risk period return and let's say the storage costs of banana is let's say two rupees per kilo, right? So S is what? And suppose I am talking about hundred kilos. So hundred into twenty spot price, right? Hundred into twenty, right? Because I am talking about hundred kilos and kilo price is twenty rupees per kilo. Plus the storage cost is two rupees per kilo. So hundred into two, two hundred e. R is 0 0.05 and let's say I am talking about a 3 month period and that is how I would determine my future price. Right? Right? Now this is all about basically about futures. Right?